doing things with friends is fun. You know what's not fun? Organizing the group payments. Fortunately, there's a better way. So the other day, a group of friends and I went to a ski trip together, and it was an amazing time. You know, we had some good food, we went skiing, we listened to good music, we had a great conversation, good vibes. But the payments and organizing the payments for it was just a huge mess. You send money to this person for food, you send the other person money for the ticket, someone paid for the hotel. Why does it, or the Airbnb, or the rental, apartment, whatever, it's just so complicated. It doesn't have to be this way. And the reason why payments are so complicated is because of this. Consider the following scenario. Three friends want to go on a group trip together, right? And then usually you probably need to pay for food, housing, and maybe tickets or something. So usually what happens is one person will pay for the food, okay? Someone else will pay for the housing. And then someone else will pay for the tickets. Now here's where things get complicated. So the person that pays for the food, hey, you have to pay them back for that. And then maybe the person who pays for the food, they have to pay the person back for the housing. But then they say, hey, you know what? Why don't you subtract the money that you pay me for the food from the housing so you only have to pay me part of it? Pay the person the housing for the tickets, then they have to pay this person back for that too. Then we have to pay this person back for the then we have to pay this person for the food back for the tickets. As you can see, it's just a huge mess. What if instead of going through all of this, you just made things super simple and you had a group wallet where everyone sent their money into? And then you could send money from out of the group wallet to each place where the money needs to go. It'd be so much easier. Another name for a group wallet is a multi-sig. And today we're going to talk about how to make a group wallet. To complete this tutorial, we will be using the Safe Docs. So if you go to docs.safe.global and you go to the Safe Core Account Abstraction SDK, the protocol kit, we will be using the protocol kit for this tutorial. And then the first thing you want to make sure is you want to make sure as well that you install all the necessary packages. So Ethers, SafeCore SDK, make sure you use version 5.7.2, SafeCore SDK types, Safe Service Client, the Ethers library, and we can also be using .env as well. Since this video was made, there's been a slight change to how the SafeCore SDK imports and will work. So instead of doing SafeCore SDK and then installing the SafeCore SDK or installing the Ethers lib or installing the Safe Service Client, instead we're going to be using the protocol kit and we're going to be using the API kit. So every time in my code I say, hey, um, run npm install or yarn add safe core SDK, replace that with protocol kit. If I say service, service client, replace that with API kit. And then if I use ethers lab, replace that with protocol kit as well. And then in your code, when you try to import things, we'll no longer be importing from ethers lab, no longer importing from safe core SDK, and no longer importing from safe service client. Instead, we'll be using the API kit, the protocol kit. And then for the types, you can get that from the safe core SDK types. And also the relay kit has been updated as well. And then so anytime, and the, rest, the best part about this is that most of your code will stay the exact same. You don't have to change anything, just the installs and the imports. And then for the actual code, the only change now is that safe service client is now safe API kit. So all this stuff is explained in, in this pull request. If you go to safe space pull request 11, all of this will be explained. And you can click on the first commit to see how your code needs to change. Good luck. Okay, so the first thing we need in our group wallet is a way we need to first of all create the group wallet and say that any of us are one of the owners of the group wallet. This will basically will allow us to say that if any of us create this wallet, we can basically trigger a transaction to pay for whatever we want. And then so we have um, a sample project here already that has the UI for adding owners and setting how many people are needed to approve a transaction. And then so in order to get this, we're going to go to this repo called um, the Safe Space repo, which you can see here. And then we're going to go ahead and clone this. All right, so the first thing you're going to do in order to get this UI, you're going to go ahead and git clone this repo. Once that's done, you're going to go ahead and CD into this repository space. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and check out um, this repository, to this branch that has the tutorial. So you're going to go ahead and go to git checkout group wallet start. Once you're done, done get checkout group, group wallet start, you're going to go ahead and run yarn install and then yarn start. Once you do that, this will take you to the safe space repo and then you can go ahead and click on wallet. Okay, so we can see here now, we can click on add owner to add the three owners we want for our group wallet. And we can even set it to say that we need two people to approve a transaction. But when we click on create wallet, nothing happens. So we're going to go ahead and implement that. First of all, let's go and look into our walletcreate.tsx file. So when we click on wallet create, we call a function called create wallet. 
inside create wallet we're going to def- we have a class defined called transaction utils that calls that creates the transaction to create the multi-sig wallet and it takes in a list of addresses as an input so we're going to go inside there we're going to go implement our create multi-sig wallet function Okay, so inside the create multi-sig wallet function, we can just call create console.log to basically see who the owners are going to be of this wallet and the threshold we've set. And we're going to call ETH adapter. So ETH adapter is the interface that's going to let us communicate with the blockchain. And then so we're going to implement ETH adapter next. And then so basically what we're going to do here is we're basically saying that, first of all, we need to make sure that we have an Ethereum provider installed, crypto wallet installed. Then we're going to use the Web3 provider. So this is like basically something like MetaMask. This is going to trigger the wallet to sign in. So this is going to, when we click on create wallet, we're going to see it a pop-up show up to, for us to sign in. Then we're going to basically deploy the save. Um, and then we're going to call it new ether adapter, which basically says that we're going to have a connection to the signer or the provider. And then it's going to return the um, signer. And then we can actually remove deploy save because that doesn't necessarily mean that we are deploying the save. Okay, so step one, get a connection to the ether adapter. Once we've done that, the next step is basically for us to call a safe factory. So basically, a safe factory is a, is an object that creates safes. So this doesn't create the safe itself, but it creates the objects that create safes. Next, we have our um, Ether adapter. So the safe account config basically defines what types of parameters that we want our safe to have. And, and if you want to see what other kind of options our safe can take when getting created, you can look at them in here. And then finally, we have here um, the safe factory will deploy the safe. So the factory is what creates the safe. And then once the fact, and then once our safe has been created, this is also known as your group wallet. We now have the address, and then we can now find the address on EtherScan at this address, and we can also view it using the safe UI. So let's go ahead and put that all together. I'm going to right click inspect. Okay, so for our owner addresses, we have them right here, so we can just use this. So that's owner one, owner three, and we're gonna set a threshold of two. This means that if we go back to our group wallet example, if we wanna send a transaction from our group wallet to like maybe to pay for food or something like this, two of the users here, so two of the owners have to approve the transaction. So this is another way of making, adding, adding more security as well. All right, so we have our three owners, we have the threshold set to two. We click on create wallet. We can see create proxy with none, so that's it. So now we should wait, and any second now we should basically see on our console.log, um, your safe has been deployed, a link to the deployment on Etherscan, and a link to the, uh, the deployment in the um, safe app UI. And I always encourage you to try to always make sure you have console.log statements that allow you to verify externally, so in the blockchain or on a third-party front end, that your safe has actually been deployed. And beautiful, there you have it. So if we click on these two, we can see that our safe has successfully been created right here. And actually, if we want to verify that it's been created, we can go and check the address of, we can open up our MetaMask. We can go to create proxy with none. So in our activity, we'll see this function. We can view it on the block explorer and we can see the details of the transaction. So here we can see create proxy with nonce, the information that we sent. And we can see that this was the address which we, we deployed it from. The two is the safe proxy factory that we talked about earlier on here, safe factory. And we go to contract here. We see that safe proxy factory is connected to the safe factory we created here. And then if we click on the second link, we can also see it in the safe UI. And we can see that it's a two out of three, like we set it to. And we can see in the settings, if we look at the owners, the owners here, 0x6db8228, 4f4, line up with the owners here. So that's part one. Now we've created our safe. So now to get to the next step, so now that we've created our safe, the next part is putting money into the safe and then using it to send transactions and then sending transactions out of our safe. So back to our example, we are going to put some money into our group wallet. And depositing money into a group wallet is just like depositing money into any type of wallet on the blockchain. We get the destination address, so we can go here and just click on copy, and we can open up our own account. So here we can go with account two, and this is the point, maybe 0 0.01 girly eat. So click on send, we're gonna paste that address, and then make sure we remove the prefix. 
We're going to say 0 0.01 curly east. And then we can do that for all of our different wallets as well. So let's pretend I'm not me and I'm one of my other friends. I'm like, hey, can you please put some money into this wallet? So they're also going to put some money and they will also put in 0 0.01 curly east. Okay, so now we have some money. We can see that we have 0 0.03 girly ETH, about $57 in our group wallet. And we can see that each person has now basically sent their money in. So now we've so now we've covered sending money into the group wallet. Now let's talk about sending money out of the group wallet. And we've set up our group wallet as a two of three wallet, which basically means we have three owners and two people have to approve a transaction before money can leave. So that basically means that anybody can propose a transaction then one of the other owners has to confirm the transaction and then basically they can execute the transaction. So it's almost like two-factor authentication for a group wallet. So step one, let's talk about how to propose a transaction in a group wallet. So if we go to back to our safe space wallet, we can see here that we have a manage wallet option. And what this basically means is that we can then go ahead and first of all, we're going to load the wallet that we want to use. So, all right, so now we've created our group wallet and each person has deposited their money into the group wallet. And you can see the three transactions here. Now we need to actually send money out of the group wallet. So how do we go ahead and say, okay, I wanna send some money from this group wallet to pay for food, for example. So for example, this would be a three-step process. So let's say I wanna send 0.025 ETH from the group wallet to, to pay for food. And so because we've set the threshold as two, anyone can propose a transaction and say, hey, I would like to send some money out of this group wallet to pay for food. And then someone else has to confirm the transaction and say, yep, I approve this transaction. Yes, let's send money out to this address. And then finally, someone will execute this transaction. So we can see here, if we go back to safe space, we have in our UI a destination address and then a destination amount. So for example, and we could say that the destination address is the person that controls the food. So we're going, ahead, going to go ahead and search for Vitalik.eth since he's the one that created the language. And we're going to pretend that he is the food person. Like he's the restaurant where we're ordering the food from. So we can basically go ahead and grab the address from there. We can go ahead and put that in destination address. Then for destination amount, we can put 0 0.0. All right, so first thing first, we're going to go ahead and use the address for Vitalik.eth. And even though this is on Etherscan, we should be using girly, um, we should be using Gorly Etherscan, but it's all the same address anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. But anyway, so we can go there, we can copy that address, and we'll paste that as our destination address. And for the destination amount, we're going to say we're going to send 0 0.025 ETH. So this is basically us paying um, out of the group wallet. And we're going to go ahead and click create transaction. As you can see, nothing is happening yet. So we're going to go ahead and implement the first step. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to our code where we have the transactions to so create transaction. And we can see there's a button here called create transaction. And we call transaction utils. We're going to pass in the address of our save, the destination address and the amount. So if we click on create transaction, we basically now need to implement the actual creation or the proposing of a transaction. So what does that look like? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to basically make sure we parse our amount properly so it's in the format that we can pass into our transaction service. Then we're going to put all that information into the transaction information. Data is going to be empty because we're only sending ETH. We're sending ETH. We're not actually going to be making any contract interactions or passing in any custom transaction data. Then we're going to get our ETH adapter. So like I mentioned before, the ETH adapter is the connection between our code and the Ethereum blockchain or the blockchain. So we will always have that there. And then save.create, this one is not creating a new safe, it's creating an instance to an existing safe using the ETH adapter to create a safe connection to the safe address. Then based on all the information we created in transaction data, we're gonna create a safe transaction. Then we're gonna get the hash of that transaction called the safe transaction hash. You can think about this almost like the safe transaction ID. And then we're gonna go ahead and sign this transaction. So this basically says that Think about, think about it like signing a, um, a check, signing a check where I am verifying that yes, I, the owner, I'm verifying that I want to send this much money to this address and then it's going to send, sign the transaction and then propose it to the safe service client. So this information needs to be saved somewhere and because it's not going to be saved on the blockchain, 
it's going to be saved off chain in the save service client at this URL because we're using Gurley. And we're going to propose the transaction and basically send it to the transaction service. And then when all that is done, we can basically view the confirm the transaction is here. And like I said earlier, I always recommend that you print the URL of where your trans basically you should always print the URL so that you can confirm that the transaction went through on an external source. So we can put all that stuff together. Refresh the page. You see here, and then basically all we're doing is signing. So again, this is an off-chain signature. We're not going to pay any gas fees, but this is just to verify that yes, I am signing that I approve sending this much money to this address. Then we can see here, it's been printed to the console.log. We can see the transaction. And then what else we can do? We can use a tool like Postman. Beautify. We can basically see the transaction. So we can see it has one confirmation. We can see this is the signature of the confirmation. And then this is some more information about the transaction. Now going back to this example, so okay, so now we've done step one, we've proposed the transaction. So this person has proposed, hey, can we send some money from this group wallet to pay for food? Now we're gonna get someone else to confirm the transaction. So now let's pretend that now we've switched roles and we are no longer owner one, but we are owner two. Right, so owner two basically needs to review the transactions that are awaiting their confirmation. So if we go to review transactions right now, it's empty. So we basically need a way to find all the pending transactions, the same way you can do here on the Safe App UI. So the way to do this, we first of all need to get a connection to the Safe Transaction service. So we're going to go to reviewtransactions.tsx, and we'll see here there's a get pending transactions function. This is going to use a Safe service client to basically get all the pending transactions in our Safe. So the first thing we're going to do is get a connection to the, the URL using the Safe Transaction Service. And again, we're going to use this Gurley Safe. And um, if you're not sure where it is, you can just search Available Services. And then if you want to use it for different blockchains, you can find a list of pre-provided chains here. And there's also even more chains available um, throughout the community. So once you've created the Safe Service, we can basically then create a safe service client to make it easier to interact with the safe service API. And then we can basically just get the list of pending transactions. And then you're, there you go. And I can see it here. It's, it has hot reload, so it does it automatically. And now we can see all the transactions. And actually, one thing we can even do is to prevent this from happening, we can put a key. And so there you have it. We can now see the transactions. So now when we click on confirm, nothing happens. So we need to basically go and implement the confirmation signature. So we can, we can go back to our code and we see that there is a line here that says um, confirm. So we go to confirm transaction and then we see transaction details that confirm transaction. Again, this function is empty. So let's go ahead and implement the confirmation transaction. So the beauty of this here is that once you've done this once, you start to see the same thing pop up over and over again. So it makes it easier to understand. So like we saw earlier on, ETH adapter to get a connection to the blockchain safe service client to make it easier to communicate with the safe service because again this is confir confirming a transaction is something that's going to happen off chain so this information can be saved to the safe service get an instance with the ex existing safe located at this address sign a transaction basically saying yes this proves that i have approved the transaction to send money from our group wallet to this destination and then confirm transaction just basically posts it to the safe service so we put all that stuff together and when we click on confirm, we can refresh the page, review transactions, click confirm. And then similar to what we saw for the previous owner, we're seeing again, another signature. We're gonna sign this to say that, yep, we approve. And you can see that happened super fast. If we now click on this and we put this in our postman, beautify this. We can now see we have two confirmations, confirmation one from the first owner and confir confirmation two from the second owner. We can actually also go verify this in our queue. And so we can basically see here that we have a transaction that has been confirmed by our two owners. You can see it here. And, but it has not been executed yet. 
So we can actually see everything that's happened here so far. Now it's time for us to go and execute this transaction, similar to how we talked about the three-step process. And also, if you refresh the page now, you'll see that when we go to re review transactions, there's also an execute. And then this is because we've added a piece of logic in our code here that says that when that when the number of confirmations required, which we set to be two, is equal to the amount of confirmations we have, we can execute this function. Actually, we could even change this to be when the confirmations required is less than or equal to the number of confirmations we have. So this basically would mean that if we had, for example, three confirmations, right, but we had only maybe two confirmations. So if we said that we require two confirmations, but we have three, we can also execute. So we can actually have more confirmations than necessary, and we can still execute. Now, if we walk into this execute transaction function, we again see that it's blank. So let's go ahead and implement the logic for executing a transaction. So again, similar to just similar to the process for confirming the transaction, we get a connection to the safe service client. This one is to basically let us know what transactions are available to get executed. So this basically says, hey, execute the specific transaction. So we use the safe service to get the transaction that, want, that we want to execute. And then we're going to use the safe SDK to actually execute this transaction. And then this transaction will be happening on chain, which is why we have here the Gurley Etherscan link. So we can basically verify and see the transaction hash of it being executed on chain. And then we can also basically also watch it in our safe transaction service as well. So now let's go ahead and refresh the page. Go to re review transactions, click on execute. There you have it. So we have an exec transaction. And again, you can see here now we're going to pay a gas fee because this execution of transaction will actually happen on chain. So we go ahead and click on that confirm. So when we go ahead and click on confirm, it'll take a bit of time because again, this one is happening on chain. And there you have it. You can see the transaction has been executed on the blockchain. So that's going to take some time to get indexed. However, we can also view it using the safe API. And then I think if we look in here, we'll see that transaction hash share is null. This was before the transaction was executed. However, now, However, now when we beautify it, we'll see that there is a transaction hash, which basically shows us that this has now been executed on chain. And we can verify that by going to Gurley. And we can see here now that it has actually been executed. We can see that the transaction of 0.025 ETH from our safe address to the destination address has been executed successfully. And that is how you execute a transaction. And that's how you create a safe and execute a transaction using a safe. And now we can do more things with friends without worrying about the hassle of payments. Yay.